Hey everybody, Mr. McIntosh here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about macOS Big Sur 11.1 Beta 2. It just came out today and, and I'm gonna go over all the new features, the known issue, and if there's any user reports. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in and get two started. Comes out just about two weeks after 11.1 Beta 1. And now remember, if you missed it before in my previous video, we talked about that version number change. We went from 11.0.1 .1 to now being versioned as 11.1. One. And that's how it's going to go right now. And next year, we're going to get 12.0. The next update will be 11.2. That's a new versioning, and we're matching up with iOS and iPadOS. It's a really nice change, and I think it'll be kind of aligning everything together here. We don't know if we're going to get a beta 3. This might be the last one before they release. I'm guessing that they might release in the next week or two right before Christmas, because there's a lot of fixes that need to be put out there for users, especially for all the Apple Silicon rebuild issues and we can talk about some of the MacBook Pro 13 inch issues from 2013 and 14. The first issue I want to talk about and address is the Big Sur installation on 2013 2014 13 inch MacBook Pro users. Apple has removed the ability to install Big Sur on those systems because it was flat out bricking them and not all of them but some of them. And that was my last update video that it came out last night talking about that issue. I said last night that we didn't know if we were gonna get another beta. Well, here it is. We've got beta two. I opened up the installer and this board ID right here, which belongs to the 13 inch MacBook Pro from 14 and 13 is not in beta two. So that means that Apple has not fixed this issue yet. Now keep in mind, I said last night that it was in beta one and it is. So what happens is I don't think Apple was able to pull that out of the beta before it was released to the public. This is the only way that can explain that because if it was in beta two, that means that would have confirmed that it was in beta one and beta two because it was fixed. Now that it's not in beta two, that really leads us only into one idea here and that's that Apple has not fixed this yet. I'm gonna to have to keep an eye on that. And I'm not so sure that they're gonna be able to fix this before the release. Again, I'll keep you guys updated with the latest kind of information that comes in on this if they add that board ID. All they need to do is add it back and obviously put the fixes in there. And when that happens, we'll know kind of what's going on here. That's that first issue. The next issue I wanted to talk about was the reinstalling of Mac OS Big Sur and Apple Silicon Macs. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be a problem for at least the next month or so until all of the Macs that were produced during that time that came from the factory with 11.0 are deployed and they start getting a new version of Mac OS, is gonna, which is gonna be 11.1 .1, and that should have this personalization issue fixed. Now, what is this issue? If you didn't miss my previous videos talking about this, what this means is, is that if a user bought an Apple Silicon Mac and brought it home and they said, okay, I'm gonna, I need to test with this, we need to do a couple things and they reinstalled Mac OS, they would get an error that says an error occurred preparing the update failed to personalize the software update and they were screwed they can't go anywhere from here they click OK and there's no OS on the system and they can't reinstall the only way to do this is to use Apple configurator 2 and then boot your Apple Silicon Mac into DFU mode with a second Mac and I've got an article that goes into that whole situation here and I've got you covered for that right here I've got all the instructions you could ever dream of if you needed to do that the only problem for these people you need a second Mac and most people obviously don't have a second Mac to do this if you have a family member or a friend that has a Mac you could do that and that could help you out but most people are going to be stuck with bringing their brand new Apple Silicon Mac back to the Apple 11.1 should fix this issue for the future but again all that stock out there that has 11.0 on there is going to have this problem and we're going to have new users getting this as soon as these Macs of a hit users hands at least now the issue is kind of public now. Some people might know about it, but most of the users are not. It's not like all the users that are buying these Macs are like keeping up to date all the time with the latest weird issues like this. Unfortunately, they're gonna have this issue. It's again, it's only a matter of time where they're not gonna have this any issue anymore. So that's the issue number two. The third issue was that users are still having issues downloading Big Sur. Most of the uh, users who wanted to get Big Sur have gotten it by now, but they're still getting this installation has failed there. So I posted this update video that kind of talks about a 
additional ways to be able to download Mac OS. And one of them is to download the install assistant package, which is the entire Mac OS Big Sur app inside this package. And when you install it, all the installation does is put the installed Mac OS app into your applications folder. That's really, literally all it does. And what users have been reporting is, is that when they run this, they're getting that the package is damaged. In that video, I kind of talk about multiple ways to download. And one of them is MDS. And I've showed you guys MDS before by Two Canoes. It's a, it's a fantastic app used for provisioning Macs in the enterprise or for schools. And one of the options is download Mac OS installer. And as you can see here, you can, pick any full installer you want and download it. And that's worked for a lot of folks. Again, that's great that we have workarounds for people who are still getting that download error. And the number four issue was the progress bar. I don't know if this is, is a lot of people were, uh, were reporting that they were getting stuck at the progress bar. I have not been able to, to verify if this is, this one's been fixed or not. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that one. The next one is, slowness after upgrading to Mac OS Big Sur 1101. Again, this is another one we're gonna have to keep an eye on. What users have reported is, is that after they jump, make the jump from Catalina or Mojave and they go to 1101, their system is really slow and sluggish. And I've got a couple tips on here and what you wanna do in that situation. But again, this is one I'm gonna have to keep an eye on too. I don't know if 11.1 addresses this or not. We'll have to kind of see from user reports. The problem with the betas is is that after the initial release or the final release of the operating system, a lot of people stop stalling the betas. So we don't get as many user reports as we did during the full beta cycle when people are really excited about the operating system. Once it's out, a lot of people just, there's no real reason to test out the betas anymore. So the user reports are way down. Again, I, we can only kind of go on what we see as reports, but I, again, I'll keep you guys apprised if we see anything with that. So that, it does it for the issues that we're doing for Mac OS Big Sur. Let's jump back into some of the inner workings of the update. Uh, so we've got five resolved issues from the brand new patch notes. There's no new known issues. There's two standing issues and no new Apple C change notes. The full installer was released on in this update, which is great. We didn't have to wait or anything like that. It was just released exactly the same day that it was announced that there's a new beta. And again, back to MDS, I can show you that when you look at the production seed, you can see that full installer and you can just download it from here or Greg Nagel's install, install Mac OS uh, Python script. Those are, these two are like the main go-tos to be able to get the latest beta here. And we'll switch to developer seed so you can see the beta versions here. And here we go. Here's, here's the latest 11.1 .1 beta 2 released today, 20C5061B. The other thing is, is that I didn't get to put this in the, the issues, but we're still seeing the beta version showing up in the software update pane, it's still bugged. This is still a problem even in 11.1 .1 beta one. We'll have to hear if that, if beta two has fixed that yet. Even when you've removed yourself from the beta in the software update pane, you still are getting beta updates, even if you're on production. And that the reasoning is, is when you clicked restore, and remove from beta in the software update pane, it's not really removing you. It, it removes the little text that tells you that you're part of the beta, but you're still in the beta. I've got the walkthrough down here to use the seed util to enroll and then unenroll. And that's basically fix this for everybody. Anybody that's been having that issue or any kind of problems with not being able to see the updates, this works every time. And I'll put a link in the description for that. So that was the full installer. The Delta update is 3.25 gigabytes. And again, the Delta update is only for one version behind. So if you were on 11.1 .1 beta one, you're gonna get the Delta update. I don't know the combo update version. And that's from any of the previous betas that will get you to beta two. Now I've added a new section here for Apple Silicon firmware updates. You know that I always, in my previous videos, always talk about the T2 bridge OS update for 2018 or newer Intel 
Intel Max, but now we're going to be talking about firmware updates every time we install a new version of Mac OS. For the Apple Silicon M1 Max, the firmware was updated to 6723.613. And if you look at it, the firmware version kind of follows the same number scheme in the first four numbers, 6723. It'll be interesting to see if version 12 comes out next year and that changes or if this will change, but you can notice how it goes to 41 to 50 and then to 61. Those are probably the main releases and maybe these are like the daily releases. I'm not sure yet. We're gonna have to find that out. 11, then two, and then three. The firmware has been updated and so has the T2 Bridge OS. The Bridge OS has been updated to 1816, 13026, and the previous version was 13017. Now let's jump into some of the, the actual changes in the release notes that uh, you might be interested in. The other ones were for Mac Catalyst and for VoiceOver. The ones we want to talk about here are this one. Booting back into macOS Big Sur 11.01 after installing Big Sur 11.1 beta into a separate volume on Macs with Apple Silicon is now supported. And using either macOS Recovery or bootable installer to reinstall macOS Big Sur 11.1 beta on Macs with Apple Silicon is now supported. And this is weird because I've shown you in the videos that this has been supported already. So I'm not really understanding what the deal with that unless that is Apple's way of telling us that the personalization error is fixed. And that's probably what this is. Because again, those both of those things work. I can take a, a fresh Apple Silicon Mac and do that after we've updated to 11.01. But if I try to do that with its factory version 11.0, it's not gonna work at all. And there has been people that have reported the issue happening with 11.01. But on mine, I can reinstall all day and not get the personalization error with 11.01. So that's a little weird, right? I don't know why some people always get it, but other people that have 11.01 like me, I can't get it to show up the personalization. And I've never updated that Apple Silicon Mac to 11.1 yet. Seeing this is confidence enough for me to say that Apple has resolved that issue and this is great news. Also, the version of the new ISPW file has been released. Now keep in mind, Apple hasn't released the ISPW files for Apple Silicon Macs to be able to restore with Apple Configurator 2 in DFU mode yet to the public. They're only available to Apple DTK, the Apple Developer Transition Kit owners. So I'll scroll down and, and this is my, if you haven't seen this before, I'm going to keep track of every ISPW firmware full Mac OS reinstall files that's ever released by Apple right here. Anyone that's available for download, I'm going to include a link. And again, it's going to be directly to Apple servers. And you can click on this link here and you can look directly at this and you can see right from the beginning here, updates.httpp cdn.apple.com full our 2020 full our fall FCS full restores. So again, that's directly from Apple. It's not gonna be from a random site. When, for example, 11.1 .1 comes out, I'll have a direct restore ISPW file for you to be able to download here. And here's that new 11.1 .1 beta 2 restore file that's available, again, only to the DTK users. I hope Apple makes the, the beta restore files available to developers because that would be really nice to be able to have that to be able to do testing. But again, right now they're only available Available to those of you. Before we go, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Ben, Half Man, Half Tech. He does great videos that go over iOS, Watch OS, and Mac OS. And what's interesting is, is I like to watch his videos because he goes into the user experience of the Mac OS beta updates. And that's what kind of sets us apart. And that's why it's great to be able to watch both of the videos. You can watch mine to get all the inner workings like firmware updates and bridge OS updates. But you can watch Ben's videos because he goes into that user experience talking about well, hey, how's Final Cut Pro going to react to the new update? Is there any problems with that? What's the performance? What's the battery life? I really enjoy those kind of things too. Give him a watch and a subscribe. I think you'll enjoy his videos. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did, please consider a like and a subscribe so you can catch more videos like this in the future. And if you're already a subscriber, I really do appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.